Lala. Thanks for stopping by to watch another video. Welcome to our new subscribers and welcome back to our subscribers who have been with us for a while. I appreciate your support of me and of our channel and I hope you enjoy this video. I do. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you enjoy this video too. So today is Friday. Today is June 30th, 2017. Even in my wackadoodle mind it is, and I am 100% sure of the date because it is the last day of June. We are bidding adieu, 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 adieu to June. We are. Uh, adios, June. Adios. <laughs> Can you believe how quick this month has gone by? I cannot believe it. So today is the last day of June. So I'm going to be taking the weekend off. We will not be having Saturday night at the sink this weekend just because it's a holiday, holiday weekend. And, you know, we have some things that we want to get done here at Lilybug Lane and everything. And I'm sure that all of you have plans um, for the weekend. And so I just thought we would take this weekend off. But we will definitely resume Saturday Night the Sink very, very soon. Um, if you do have any events to host or attend this weekend, I hope everything goes smooth as butter. I do. I do. I hope everything goes smooth as butter, and I hope that the weather cooperates because there is some very volatile weather that is amping up and gearing up and getting ready to, um, you know, make an appearance across a lot of the United States. So I hope that wherever you are this weekend that, um, you know, the weather cooperates and that you are able to do what you want to do, um, whether it is having a cookout, attending a cookout, going for the fireworks. This is a very odd holiday because it's on a Tuesday. You know, the 4th of July is officially on Tuesday this year. So it's very, very strange. It is very, very strange. So Chewy will have off on Tuesday. The office will be closed on Tuesday. So he will have off. But he works Monday and he works Wednesday. So um, it's just strange to have a holiday on a Tuesday. And especially something like the 4th of July. But that's okay. We'll all celebrate our independence. And we will display our American flags proudly in front of our house. So Chewy will be putting the American flags out this evening. Um, we are in the 7 o'clock hour now. So um, I thought that we would get together and just kind of wrap up the whole month, wrap up the whole month and gear up for July. It is going to be July tomorrow. Well, it's going to be July at 12.01 a.m. tonight, but um, I just can't believe how fast June has gone. Um, you know, things just feel bejangly to me, um, and I know that there are a couple of you, and I've said it before, that are going through the exact same thing. Um, and, you know, I have told you all before that I do suffer from seasonal affective disorder. And I kind of was feeling the same way I feel in the wintertime. And so I was doing some reading. I was doing some research and stuff. And um, I did read that um, there you can have seasonal affective disorder in the summertime, too. And it's just, you know, I don't know if it's a year-long thing. I don't know if I'm starting to exhibit um, um, symptoms that I exhibit in the wintertime, if I'm starting to exhibit them in the summertime now. Um, our weather has been very, very crazy so far this year. It has not felt like summer. Um, we had some really good storms last night. We did, we did. Thunder, thunder, thunder. And we had cloud to cloud lightning. You know that finger lightning that goes zzz across the sky? That was a sound effect of lightning. Do you want me to do it again? Zzz. That was pretty good, wasn't it? It was. That was a pretty good sound effect. But we had cloud to cloud lightning, the finger style lightning last night. But we had very little rain, very little rain. But we did have a lot of thunder and a lot of lightning. Now, we are expected to have storms later this evening. We have an 80% chance. Chewy has been looking at the radar and it is moving towards us. And you know that we are in the Ohio Valley. So, you know, it is moving towards us. Um, it is supposed to be wet all weekend. Well, Sunday's supposed to be partly cloudy, so Chewy's keeping his fingers crossed because he wants to spiff up the yard. The yard is looking a little bit bejangled because, you know, he's been under the weather a little bit and 
he hasn't been able to, he hasn't felt well enough to get out and get the yard spiffed up. So he does need to do that. So anyway, so I thought we would get together and we would just have an end of the month chat. And um, I wanted to wish you all a very, very happy uh, holiday weekend. Again, if and you have anything to attend or host, I hope everything goes very, very well. If you have any projects that you would like to get done this holiday weekend, I hope that you make a list and you get each thing done that you want to get done. Taking breaks in between, TCB, but you got to take breaks in between. And um, if you plan to rest, relax, and recharge, the three most important R's, but it is hard sometimes to do that. I hope that's exactly what you are able to do. As always, I'm going to give our standard PSA here at Lilybug Lane that if you are going away from home to an event, um, or you're hosting an event, you're leaving for vacation, please, please, please be aware of the weather that is expected in your area for where you will be when you will be there because, um, you know, they are saying that there's going to be a lot of severe storms and a lot of um, very volatile weather and stuff. So we want everybody to be safe at Lilybug Lane, or we want our circle of friends to be safe too. So since it is the end of the month, we're just gonna go through a couple of things. Um, Louise is very, very excited because look what came in the mail today, another Bath and Body Works um, coupon thing. And um, they have new bath fizzies with Shea. So that's one of the things that they are um, advertising. Now, we have never used bath fizzies. We are more shower people here at Lilybug Lane, although we do take baths. I like to take, um, usually every couple weeks, I'll do an Epsom salts bath. You know, if Louise isn't feeling well, she loves to do an Epsom salts. If Chewy's not feeling well, if he's worked outside in the yard a lot and he's feeling a little bit sore, then he'll do an Epsom salts. But primarily, we are a shower family. We do not typically take baths. And I have seen quite a few reviews um, of the bath bombs across the board, whether they are from Lush or Walmart or Big Lots or Dollar Tree or Bath and Body Works. I have seen a, you know, I've seen a wide range of reviews and demos of these body bomb, these uh, bath bombs or bath fizzies, and. Um, Yes, they're pretty to look at, and yes, they look like a lot of fun in the tub and everything, but it looks like there's a lot of residue on the water, which just like, ooh, it just makes me like, ugh, I don't want to do, you know, that's not my gig. That is not my gig. But anyway, so they are coming out with bath fizzies with Shay at Bath and Body Works. And then something new that they are doing is shower jelly. Shower jelly which I'm thinking is thicker than the shower gel. So if you think like grape jelly, the consistency of that, or I'm even thinking jello, maybe something like thick like jello, but it looks like it's gonna come in these pots here. So that'll be very, very interesting to see what people think about that. Um, you all know that we love, um, we love shower gel bath gel, body wash, that kind of stuff. Chewy absolutely hates it. He says that's what's clogging our drains. But I say to Chewy, you know what, Chewy? Too bad, so sad. I'm using the, I'm using the bath, I'm using the, the body wash. I'm using all my body wash that I love. I love the Olay, I love the philosophy, you know, I love the body wash. So anyway, but that's what it looks like they're coming out with is the shower jelly which I don't, I don't know about that. But anyway, so we got two coupons here. One is a free gift and one is 20% off our total order. You all know Louise loves the Bath and Body Works. She loves to go in there and look around. It's a fun store, it's a happy store. Not really my cup of tea, but Louise is all up in it. So we are going to be going to Bath and Body Works at some point to be able to you know, do this thing. She really likes the Bath and Body Works lotion the best. So anyway, on to on to something else. I do have a beverage here in my Hello Kitty rock and roll cup. And um, 
it's due. I'm just going to tell you, it's due. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you it's water when it's not water. It's due. It's the nectar of the gods. And, um, yeah, I'm weak. I have no willpower. I'm weak. Plus, can I tell you, I'm, I'm a little bit sick and tired of water. I've been drinking a lot of water because, you know, I've been trying to push the water on Chewy since he hasn't been feeling well. So I've been drinking a lot of water, too, and I'm sick to death of it. I need something with flavor and fizz and yummy goodness, and that is the nectar of the gods. It is Mountain Dew, and that's exactly what I have tonight in my Hello Kitty rock and roll cup is nectar of the gods. So let's get to it, shall we? We shall. We are at the end of June. We are June 30th, 2017, which means it is time to um, do the dollar a day update, okay? So for those of you that are new to Lilybug Lane or if you are visiting here at Lilybug Lane, we are um, doing a dollar a day savings program throughout 2017. It is one dollar bill, one dollar bill every day in an envelope. And you do that every single day, and at the end of 2017, you will have $365 saved up, and it was absolutely painless. Now, if you are new to Lily Bug Lane, or if you have if you have been here for a while and you have not started this yet, it's never too late to start. It's never too late to start. Anytime you can start a savings program. It is a good thing. So if you haven't started it yet, I would encourage you to go ahead and start it because you're still going to have a nice chunk of change at the end of the year um, that you can either use for Christmas presents or you can put it into a college fund for a child. You can use it for a fabulous uh to go do something fabulous, an activity, a family activity, or something like that. So it's an easy, painless way to save money and it is one dollar every single day only one dollar um, and you know the whole point of it and this is three months because remember Chewy is um, bundling three months at a time so um, this is this is the next three months or the last three months so he will bundle this and then we'll start um, with an empty envelope tomorrow so we've been doing it for about, this is our third year now. So very, very exciting. So as of today, as of today, you should have $181 in your dollar a day fund. Um, and that would be $31 for March, $28 for February, $31 for January, $28 for February, $31 for March, $30 for April, $31 for May, and $30 for June. And that totals $181. Now, if you're putting $5, if you're doing more than a dollar a day, then yippee skippy for you, but you're still not following the program like you're supposed to. The program is $1 every day. And, and the point is, is to get into the habit of doing it. You know what I mean? get into the habit and one dollar is very very painless to do one dollar is very very painless to do everybody can find a dollar a day you just order a smaller drink at the Starbucks you buy one less thing at the Dollar Tree you um, maybe I don't know don't get the big the big coffee I, I mean I don't know but it's easy to do a dollar a day and each day it adds up and up and up and I know that there are quite a few of you that are doing it and I am very very excited so as of today hundred and eighty one dollars so I hope everybody is on track and again if you have not started it yet please feel free to start it at any time during the year because that's still going to give you money at the end of the year. So I just want to say that. So since we are going into July tomorrow and we will not see each other over the weekend, I did want to go over the full moon information for July. Now, here's the thing. The full moon is going to come very early this month, very early in the month of July. The full moon is on July 9th, 2017. That is a Sunday this year. And the full moon for the United States will be at 12.07 a.m. on July the 9th, 2017. 
the the name of the moon for July is called the full buck moon or the thunder moon. And the reason for that is you all know that the names of the full moons originated with the Native American Indians who who gave names to the full moons based on things that were happening in their personal lives, in their tribes, in their environments around them. That is how they gave names to the full moons. And so the full buck moon was named because the buck deer start to grow their antlers around this moon phase. So it was given the name full buck moon. Thunder moon was given, was the moon was given the name Thunder Moon by the Plains Indians because during this time there are a lot of thunderheads that form um, up in the sky in the Midwest and in the Plains. So, um, you know, you have whichever one you like best. I personally like Thunder Moon the best because I love thunder. But anyway, so that is the name of the full moons, the full moon this phase or in July is full buck moon or thunder moon. Now we have something very, very exciting. Today we are in waxing crescent. It is a 45% illumination, but tomorrow we will go into the first quarter moon and we will be in waxing gibbous. Now, when you go into a when you go into the first quarter moon, that means that the moon is at least 50% illuminated. Remember, so and then it's going to be 55% illuminated tomorrow. So we will be in waxing gibbous. So we go from waxing crescent up to 50%. Once you hit 50%, you're in the quarter. You're in the new quarter moon or first quarter moon, and then once you go over 50% it becomes gibbous. You are in waxing gibbous, meaning that the moon is more than 50% illuminated. So we all know that because we all love the moon and we talk about it so much here at Lily Bug Lane. So something very, very exciting that is going to happen in August, okay? And the reason I'm talking about it now is because you may start hearing a lot about it on the Weather Channel, on your news stations, in your... Um, in your newspapers or there you may see um, things on the TV about it is there is going to be a total solar eclipse in the United States or for you know over the United States on Monday August the 21st now it is going to be seen from Portland Oregon to set to, it is going to be seen from Oregon to South Carolina and um, a solar eclipse is when the moon passes in front of the sun, okay? And it is during the daytime hours. So, you know, as it's happening, you'll notice that the daylight dims, you know, it gets a little bit dark. Now, it's not going to get pitch black nighttime dark, but it can get as dark as twilight depending on where you are in the United States. Um, and the, the total eclipse is going to be in a 70 mile wide path across the United States, the total eclipse. And I, I had Chewy print out a map here so that we could look at this map and be able to see exactly where the to this total eclipse is going to be able to be seen pretty much through the middle of the country starting up here at um, starting up here in Oregon and then this is going to be a 70 mile wide path right here across the United States where it will be a total eclipse 100% eclipse so this is where it'll be the darkest during the eclipse okay so if you are in this region across the United States, you will be able to see a total eclipse. Now, if you move south or north, you're not going to get the 100% coverage of the sun. So for instance, if you're above, you're going to get 90. If you're more, if you're north, if you're more north, you're going to get 80, more north. 70 more north 60 so it kind of tells you um, how much 
of the sun you're going to still be able to see during the eclipse you'll still be able to see parts that uh, you'll still be able to see the eclipse but it's not going to appear total to you so based on based on this map of the United States it looks like we are going to be able to see 90% of the eclipse when it happens on August the 21st, 2017. So very, very interesting. And if you want to go on, you can go on to the NASA website. You can also go on to weather.com and read more about it. The last total solar eclipse was on February 26th, 1979. That was the last total solar eclipse in the United States. So, but um, I think this is very, very interesting because you can see how you'll still be able to see part of the sun the more north you go and you'll still be able to see part of the sun the more south you are from that 70 mile wide path where they're going to be able to see the total eclipse. And they did say on the Weather Channel that it was very, very interesting that out in the Midwest, in this 70 mile wide path, that a lot of the hotels and things are, are filling up because people want to be able to see the total eclipse you know, weather buffs and, and solar buffs and things like that, people that study the, the sun and things like that. So. Very, very interesting. And I think this is very, very interesting, too, because, you know, we just had the show Genius on, and part of the thing about Genius was is that he was trying to catch an eclipse. Do you remember that? He tried to catch it once and wasn't able to catch it and then had to try and catch it again. And it was like a lunar or solar, I don't know which one, but he was, he did need to document an eclipse in order to be able to prove a theory that he was doing, Albert Einstein. So I think that's kind of neat. So if you have littles that are interested in space or, um, you know, the stars and the planets and things like that, if you have a planetarium in your area, if you have a library in your area, um, you know, it might be fun to visit and see if you can, if there are any programs that are being done based on the eclipse that's coming up, if there's any talks that are be, being done. Um, a planetarium would be a very, very fun place to take your littles or your grands, you know, in order to explain and have them experience, you know, what it is like to have a um, solar eclipse. So, do you remember when you were in school? I remember, it might have been 1979, but for some reason I'm thinking it was earlier than 1979. But um, when you, we all went outside at school, we all went out and we were all like on the playground and they gave us these dark glasses and we put them on. And I remember the teachers kept telling us, don't look, don't take your glasses off, don't take your glasses off. But some reason, I'm thinking it was before 1979, but that was the last total um, solar eclipse. And that information is all off of the NASA website. So I just want to let you know that. I just want to let you know. So I've, I've caught up on Big Brother. I am caught up on Big Brother. Very, very interesting. Louise is just tickled pink that it is on. She absolutely loves Big Brother. I know that there are quite a few of you that also love Big Brother. So I'm all caught up on that. I think I pretty much know who I like, who I don't like. Um, you know, Something bothers me, and I've talked to one of my friends about this who is a Big Brother fan in our circle of friends. Um, I'm a little bit irritated that they do not have older house guests on Big Brother. You have the one man who has the seven kids, um, which I'm a little bit, I'm like, what, what's up with you, you know, but anyway. And then I think the next oldest person is Christmas because she said she's 35 um, and then there would be a big age gap between the oldest gentleman who has the seven children and Christmas who is 35 there's a pretty big age gap in there between those two um, 
you know, I just, I think it's very, very odd that they don't have any middle-aged or 40 plus other than the gentleman who has the seven children. Um, I just find that very, very odd and a little offensive, actually. Um, you know, not everybody wants to see a bunch of this going on all the time. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, seriously, I was watching it with Louise and everything I kept saying, I kept saying, cover that stuff up! Cover that stuff up! I don't want to see that stuff! <laughs> I know, right? But it just seems like there needs to be a little more wisdom in the house and there needs to be a little more life experience in the house. Do you know what I'm saying? Because it just, it just, it just doesn't seem, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to get into it right now. But anyway, I am, the whole point of me saying that was, is that I am up on Big Brother. I am up on Big Brother and we are enjoying it and I hope that all of you are too. And please feel free to put your thoughts down in the comment section as to what you think about any particular, um, um, house guest. And just to let you know, Dominique is from the town or the city that I grew up in, in Virginia. So she is a local girl, so to speak for me. But um, anyway, so that's about it for our Friday night monthly wrap up. I hope that you are all well. Please, please, please feel free to put a comment down below. I promise, promise, promise I am going to catch up on comments. I thought I was caught up. Then I realized I wasn't caught up, and I promise I will get caught up on comments. So have a great, great weekend, everybody. I will be thinking of each and every one of you. Please feel free to leave a comment down below. I hope that you are happy. I hope that you are healthy, and I hope that you are safe, and I will see you all again very, very soon. Have a great weekend.